we all wish we could make money doing what we love, right? Yeah, I mean, that sounds great. Now, why isn't that the case yet? I think it's important to understand where is the gap between where you are now to making money doing what you love. And even though right now, a lot of you watching this feel like, well, I deserve to be paid doing what I love. Why isn't it already happening? And I believe that. I, I believe that at the most fundamental, most important level, your soul deserves to exist in abundance. And I believe also that you have a soul intuition. If you allow me to go woo-woo just for a minute here, you have a soul intuition that you should be fully abundantly supported by the universe just doing what you love, just playing and being yourself and being loving and being connected to others and, and doing what your soul flourishes in doing and being financially, abundantly, materially supported for it. I think our souls have an into the more you are uh, connected to um, soulfulness or spirituality, I believe the more your intuition is about that, which is why it's so painful, I think, for us spiritual, spiritually inclined people to see this major gap between where we are now to getting paid or being fully abundantly supported, just being what we love and doing what we love. And you know what? One day, before long, it'll feel like a blink of an eye. You will be there again. Let me just complete the woo and then I'll get to the more practical here. Before long, your soul will exit the body and you will be in the world of eternity again, where you are fully abundantly supported, just being who you are and doing what you love. <laughs> but until then, your soul came into this material universe, material universe to learn something, to practice something. And let me talk about now, now end Wu <laughs> for a moment now, and let's talk about the practicalities of what are we here to practice and learn. And so therefore by practicing well, we can also create heaven on earth. We can also create a situation where we are paid abundantly for doing what we love and being what we love. Okay. So practically speaking, money comes from other people. Let's think about this. It's just important to remind yourself again and again, like I remind myself, your income comes from other people deciding to give you money, right? Okay. Now, why do other people decide to give you money? Because you are giving them value that they can't easily find for free or that they don't already have. So some of us are like, well, I think my thing has such value. How come they don't want to pay for it? It's because you haven't yet communicated the value to them, that they haven't experienced the value that you're talking about. And so that's why they're not paying you for it. So this is where marketing comes in, right? Is to help you communicate the value that you do have so that your audience can experience that value and go, oh, I want more of that. I want that. I may pay you so I can have that value. And so this is why I'd spend so much time teaching marketing Things like content, you know, authentic content creation and creating aligned offers and you know, market discovery before creating aligned offers, et cetera, et cetera. I spend so much time because I'm trying to help you understand and practice communicating the value that you do provide. Now, one other thing that is important for us to, to briefly discuss here is you might not have as much value to offer others as you think you do. That's the, 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 the hard truth, real talk here, okay? Your thing feels so valuable to you because you have lived it. You went from not knowing anything to having lived experiences, ups and downs of life, difficulties that you overcame so that now you the whatever you learn feels so valuable because you lived that experience. You just communicating the final result to other people doesn't feel valuable to them because they haven't lived that experience. You have to help them 
to actually live that experience so that they go, oh, now I understand through my lived experience what you're talking about. That was really valuable. And so you have to craft a, a structure, a program of some kind to help them go through that lived experience to come out on the other side being transformed and therefore really receiving the value, right? Now, that's hard to do. I mean, otherwise you would have already done it. If it was easy, you would have already done it, okay? If it was easy to you, you would have already done it. But what is the road in front of you of doing market discovery, of creating aligned offers, of creating enough authentically valuable content that people go, you know what? Okay, okay, I get it now. I trust you now. Here's my money. Let's do this. The road to there requires you to do many hard things, or let me play it this way, things that are outside your comfort zone. Otherwise, you would have already comfortably done it. Things that are outside your scope of understanding. Otherwise, you would have understood and you would have done it already. There are many hard things that you still yet have to do to get to that future state of abundance, just doing what you love. And guess what? You can see that path. You can see that journey as some kind of aberration of reality saying, that shouldn't be the case. I should, as a soul, as a worthy soul, I should just instantly right now be abundantly paid for doing whatever I love. Why isn't, why am I not there yet? Well, this is the point. That's why you came here to earth to do that journey of practice. Now, the thing, the problem is that journey that you have to take from here to there can sound like a chore, can sound like what a drag that I have to take, I have to do all these difficult things. I have to figure out how to do this and, and practice doing that and get better at communicating and all that stuff and, and, and get better at organizing my information and organizing my structure and, and organizing my embodiment so that I am more credible and more grounded in skill to actually deliver value to my audience. But what a drag to have to get from here to there. I think the more, the more spiritually inclined someone is, the more they feel that gap as, as what a drag, you know, instead of just being there instantly, like the soul knows it should be able to in the inter Anyway, so let me tell you then, how do we reframe that journey so that it's worthwhile? So that it's, it's, it's one that you actually want to take instead of one that you have to take. Okay. So I have, um, so this some notes I'm going to, I'm going to read here. You have to do stuff you don't naturally like until you have money to do just what you love. You have to do stuff you don't naturally like until you have money to do just what you love, right? The stronger your passion for the vision of your life, the stronger your passion for the future vision of your life, the more painful it is to be away from that vision yet. The more, the more of a drag it is to have to take that journey all the way there. But the framing of that journey as a worthwhile experience changes everything. It changes everything because now every day when you show up, you can either be happy or you can be gritting your teeth and bearing the pain until you get there. I say, why not be happy every single day that you show up? And how do we do that? We reframe every single thing we do every day as one of joyful productivity. So for example, right? When I show up to make this video, before I started recording, I wasn't going, gosh, I am so brilliant. I, uh, people, people need to hear from me and I'm gonna, I, I can't wait to show up to video and everything that I, every second of my video is gonna be entertaining and engaging for the viewer. That's not what I'm thinking. Maybe some of you are, are blessed to have that high of a self-esteem, right? And, and therefore, it's easy for you to show up to make videos or to do your writing or whatever. For me, no. And same thing with writing. When I show up to write, I don't go, gosh, I'm, this is, you know, whatever is going to come out of me in my writing, is, it's going to be worthwhile and it's going to be transformational. And it's going to be engaged. No. When I show up to write, I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> you know. I, I have an idea here, but I don't know. The execution might be really bad and it's not going to come out right. Same thing when I make video. This video probably is already poorly executed already, but whatever, right? Like I, have, I, I don't want to say I have a low self-esteem, but I, I, I think I have a realistic 
uh, self-esteem that I'm not the most charismatic person in the world. I'm probably not. I, I'm probably not as charismatic as m- many of the other people you watch on YouTube or Instagram, or whatever. Because the algorithms naturally serve up the most entertaining, the most engaging, the most interesting things for you. And thank you for being willing to bear with my stuff, right? Like I, I know myself, and I know how my content compares to the typical stuff you're going to see out there, right? And so, but I show up, so it's George, if you, if you have such a, so many self-doubts about showing up, how do you still get yourself to show up, right? How do you still be happy and joyful showing up rather than saying, what a drag that I have to do this? Here's how, here's with content, here's how I do it. I show up for my creativity fitness. I show up because I know that if I don't show up, I don't practice my creativity muscles, my powers of self-exploration, my powers of expressing my energy signature. If I don't show up, I don't get to practice. And if I don't practice, I don't get better. And so I, I find joy in the practice. I find joy not only in the practice, but also in the fact that once I get going, I feel more connected to my ideal viewer, to you. Right now, in this moment, I feel more connected to you than before I started recording this video. When I started recording, sure, I do my energy reboot and I try to imagine connecting to you and then I start recording. However, it's not until five, 10 minutes into the recording that I feel more alive with my, both my self-exploration and my outer connection to you than ever before. Than, than before I started recording. So I'm, I show up to practice creativity fitness for myself, to keep my mind sharp, to keep my emotional expressions um, more empowered because I, otherwise, I, I, if I don't express, I don't practice expression, right? So I, pra- I show up for myself, but I also show up because I love my connection to you. I love serving you however I can whoever you are who's watching this right now. And when I see comments, when I see people who message me and say this helped, that confirms, yes, this is why I'm doing this, right? But even if nobody comments, even if nobody messages me, I still show up to practice my imaginary connection and and service orientation. I show up to practice my creativity, fitness, and my service orientation. That's why I do it. That's why I keep showing up day after day, even though many of my videos, especially in the first couple of years, many of my videos got no comments, none. N- not Many of them didn't even get barely a like. Maybe one person liked it, maybe once in a while, right? Two people liked it eventually once in a while. And then, oh my gosh, five people liked it every now and then. But I showed up in the beginning for the creativity fitness and for the continued imagination and the service orientation, imagination of my connection to you and the service orientation towards you. I show up because of my heart. In other words, I show up for my heart to explore my heart and to, and to expand my heart's connection to my ideal viewer. I show up for love. That's really what it is. So that's one example, right? Of something that you don't typically want to do to be consistent with. Oh, what's, who, what, why bother, right? Another example is selling something, right? All of us, in order to make it in business, we have to sell something. And most of us watching this are trying to create an authentic business where we sell what we love. And so we naturally, like, maybe we have gotten some uh, training that we love and we want to sell our coaching or our mentoring or our healing or our or something we we can't, we went through a lot of experiences and we developed some kind of structure uh, for transformation and we want to sell that structure that I um, modality to others <clears throat> and so showing up to like create a web page about this thing to then put it on social media and with some anxiety wondering if people are going to buy it. That's not naturally fun for most of us. Not, not for me anyway. You might be surprised, but it's not naturally fun for me. So how do I then still show up with joy? 
instead of showing up as a chore, like grit my teeth, oh, I got to get this thing done so that finally I'll be able to have a client and then be joyful. No, there should be joy all along the way. Otherwise, it's not worthy of my soul. That's what I am. Mean. Like, why am I doing this if it's not worthy of my soul? This is the reason that my soul is here is to expand my love. It's to expand my ability to be virtuous in various ways, to be more loving, to be more courageous, to be more patient, to be more persevering, to be more forgiving, to be more understanding and wise. That's why I'm here. So as I create my offer, right, what I'm doing is saying, once again, practicing the imagination of the service orientation to my ideal client, to imagine who they are, to based, based my, on my understanding of who they are, which is why market discovery is so important. This is why it's important to talk to your audience, to connect with them one-to-one -one whenever possible, to lean into your love for them, your compassion and empathy for them, so that you can listen well to what their problems are, what their wants are right now, what they're seeking, what they're buying. What they're buying is an indication of what they want, a clear, very clear indication of at least what they want in the market, for sure, which is what you need to understand for your business. And then once you have that empathy connection and understanding of what they want, then when you're creating your offer, you're leaning into that empathy instead of just being in your own head and being, oh, I, I want to offer this. This would be so fun to do. That's If you're lucky, fine. What's fun to do might actually work as in sales, but a lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times you have to lean in to your, to your empathy in the moment when you're creating your offer, you're writing your sales page, you are writing that social media post, you are, you know, whatever, putting together the offer. You have to lean into your empathy. In other words, that's the moment of loving them. That's the whole point. Like, like can you imagine if everything you do in your business, you can reframe it as an a practice of loving more, whether loving yourself more and your self-exploration and your connection with the divine more and or loving your connection with your ideal client and your heart to serve them more. Like if every single thing, look at your calendar today, look at your to-do list for the coming week. If every single thing on there can be reframed as a practice of, of expanding love, and wisdom, everything is freaking worthwhile. Everything can be deeply joyful because it's aligned with your soul's mission here. Then the entire journey now becomes a worthwhile journey. I hope this makes sense. Uh, if, if it doesn't, maybe watch it again. <laughs> I don't know. But I... I also welcome you to comment below. I'm genuinely curious if this makes sense at all. And if you can see yourself reframing something in your business that you don't want, you don't naturally love doing, how can you reframe that so that it becomes something your soul loves to do because it's deeply purposeful to your soul? Whatever that might be, look at your to-do list, pick one thing. And, and if it's truly not, sometimes we should chuck that item out. So, well, it's, it's really not something that's worth doing, period. Maybe it has some tiny practical benefit, but it's not, it's, it's so far from being worthy of the soul, you chuck it out. But many things in business, I've just given you a couple of examples in this video, can be reframed as being worthy of the soul. So I encourage you to do that. Give us an example in the comment below if you, if you, if you can, if you'd like to. Thank you for joining me on this journey.